From 2013 to 2018, former Maldives President Abdullah Yameen borrowed heavily from Beijing for construction projects. Now, three Chinese banks hold over half of Maldives' sovereign debt. In 2021, Maldives' foreign debt was three billion dollars, according to the World Bank. In November 2023, IMF warned Maldives that they are at a high risk of external debt distress. The World Bank told them to manage spending better and boost their revenue to ensure fiscal stability. But Muizu seems to be set on repeating his mentor's mistake. Not only is he hampering Maldives' revenue from tourism by alienating India, which accounted for 11% of its tourism market and the effects of which are already being seen, but China has also pledged more funding for the Maldives after Muizu came to power. Instead of running in the other direction, Muizu is thanking China for its selfless assistance for development funds. Now, on 7 February, the IMF has issued a red signal to Maldives, saying that they are at a high risk of debt distress. Without getting into exact details of the foreign debt, IMF says that Maldives must urgently adjust their policy. In fact, Muizu himself has said that he can't launch any new development projects due to the country's debt situation. Yet his move seems to be pushing the country further towards a possible Chinese debt trap. Let's look at some other countries who borrowed heavily from China and fell into the trap. Sri Lanka they defaulted on foreign debt just two years ago. Inflation went past 50 percent, and half the population in many parts of the country fell into poverty. In fact, the visuals of people queuing up for food and fuel and rebelling against the government dominated much of the country's discourse in that year. Pakistan, another country where people queued up for basic ration, where millions of workers were laid off because the government had too much foreign debt to even keep electricity running. Kenya, where the government held back civil servant salaries because they needed the money to repay foreign debt. The story has been the same for a bunch of other countries like Mongolia and Zambia. All of these countries have one thing in common: being heavily indebted to China. Most of these countries' tax revenue was going into repaying loans from China. As much as 50% of their foreign loans were from China, and in trying to repay them, their governments fell short of money. China's debt trap policy, though Beijing denies that this exists, basically works like this: they lend money or fund infra projects with high interest rates, which makes it harder for the countries to repay these loans. Then China gets the upper hand, and they can pressurize these nations. Like when Sri Lanka had to give China control of the Hambantota port in two thousand and seventeen, since they couldn't pay China back. This was basically discussed in context of the countries who had signed up for the BRI project. China lent over one trillion dollars to hundred countries through the scheme. However, the projects have been very costly, and the returns have been disappointing.